So the holdout, Josh Jacobs' holdout, is finally over. Him and the Raiders signed a one-year, eleven point eight million dollar contract uh, that can go up to twelve million with if he hits two hundred thousand uh, dollars in incentives. Pretty big. Uh, that's not really. I mean, think about it. this holdout that the running backs had. They were defending, you know, trying to raise the running back market. They didn't do so well. Most of them just caved in. Saquon, <laughs> yeah. on the first day of training camp, yeah. said, you know what, let me sign the exact same contract <clears throat> just with like $900,000 in potential incentives. So not the best deal uh, because they're making essentially the same money with, uh, or at least in case they don't hit their incentives, they'll be making the same amount of money. But Josh Jacobs actually signed, I think, the highest baseline salary amongst those running backs that are looking for future contracts or at least big contracts now. So I want to know how important do you think it was that the Raiders finally signed their all pro running back very important I mean he was very important for them last year he had 1653 yards rushing 12 TDs he's only 25 years old and uh you know I if if uh if a franchise if he has another great year which I think there's a good chance of it <coughs> and franchise him again next year he'll get even more money I would think so. You know, I get a one-year deal. That's uh, I feel I feel bad for them, these running backs, so because they they really put themselves in harm's way. Uh, one-year deals for them, they could easily get hurt and be done. So, I uh, I feel bad. He only got a one-year deal, twelve million bucks. It's not the top of the market. It's far from it. From Christian McCaffrey, right? He's the benchmark, right? What was his contract? Is fourteen, right? Christian McCaffrey's making sixteen million. Sixteen a year. million, sixteen million a year. So, you know, he didn't get any fines for missing any camp because he didn't have a contract. He was number twenty four in the in the two thousand nineteen draft, and uh, you know, I think he's a very high quality player, one of the best in the NFL. He's going to wear a new number, number eight. Great. That's what he wore in college for two years at Alabama. So. Uh, I think the Raiders make out pretty well here, and uh, I, I hope Jacobs has another great year so that he can try to strike a better, uh, you know, a, a good deal for himself next year. Well, Josh Jacobs was campaigning to get himself signed to a deal. He kept posting on Instagram a bunch of his, you know, you know, his impact on the team. Uh, for for instance, one of them is percentage of team touches. He nearly had fifty percent of his entire team touches last season. Uh, rushing first down leaders, he was first by a long shot. He had ninety three rushing first down touches, and uh, Nick Chubb had the second highest with sixty nine. He had ninety three. So and it also. Also, before that, uh, I think it's what the most rushing yards before turning 25. Uh, he is seventh on this list behind Hall of Famers like Marshall Falk, Ladanian Thompson, Walter Payton, Edgerin James, Emmett Smith, and Barry Sanders. And also, most scrimmage yards per game, he led er, in Raiders history. He led the entire Raiders franchise history in most scrimmage yards per game with 98.2. So, his impact, and besides, I talked about this before. Um, last season, <coughs> he had, uh, er, let's see, he had. 1,653 yards with 12 rushing touchdowns. And games where he didn't rush for 100 or more yards, they went one and, I think, one and eight. With the only law, or the only win being where against the Patriots when Jacoby Myers threw the game away, or Ramon J. Stevenson handed the game away, then Ramon J. and then uh, Jacoby Myers threw it away. So that's just the impact that Josh Jacobs had just last season. He's been one of you know one of the better backs in the league. Maybe he's not one of the top of the, the one of the top backs I would say, but he's definitely up there uh, with production. He has multiple double double digit rushing touchdown seasons. Uh, he has multiple thousand yard seasons, and he's really the only reason why the Raiders they didn't have a lot of success. But most of his success out of their six wins came from that guy right there, Josh Jacobs. So for the Raiders to finally sign their their uh, all pro back. And besides, we had to take a look at the QB situation. Jimmy G is their quarterback. He can't go out and win you games consistently. Can he win you a game or two here? Maybe, probably. But if you're talking about sustained success that I'm sure the Raiders are hoping for with Jimmy Garoppolo, with the Josh McDaniel system, he functions better when things are easy for him, when he can hand the ball off to running backs like Elijah Mitchell, like CMC. When he sort of has that with the Josh Jacobs. Now, Josh Jacobs isn't as good as CMC, but mm, I don't know about that. I, I mean, I don't know. There's, about there's that. a reason why the Panthers. I mean, they, they, and they like CMC because he can throw the ball. But how often is he going to do that? He's not throw, no, they like him because he, he, he can catch the ball. He can catch the ball. He's the best Josh receiving Jacobs, back, and he's one of the best rushing backs. They don't need to throw it to him because he's ran for 1,653 yards. Right. 
No, right? I, no, I understand that, but no, CMC is the best running back in the league, hands down. He, it, if you talk about all around running backs, he could case the best receiving back. Uh, I'd put him probably top three and just you know actually running the football, and that's why he's making sixteen million dollars a year in Josh Jacobs' career catching the ball. That has not necessarily been you know. His forte. Now, has he been able to catch the ball? Yes, and that was actually part of his role with with Derek Carr. Uh, multiple, he had, uh, he had a, the past two seasons. He caught at least fifty uh, passes each of those seasons. He had four hundred yards last season catching the ball. And you know, I think Josh Jacobs. When you talk about you know production with the Raiders, I think he's one of only three running backs to have three hundred total yards, something <coughs> like that. Uh, which is incredible, 300 scrimmage yards, and that's the reason why they won the game. He had that long run. I believe it was an overtime to win that game. So. If you're talking about the Raiders here with Jimmy Garoppolo, who's a limited quarterback, you need to have a good back. And the Raiders, without Josh Jacobs, didn't have that. Now imagine they went 6-11 and with Derek Carr, who people like to hate, but isn't actually that bad. Um, if you had, now you're replacing with Jimmy G, if you just had, and, and once again, the, the, I think they had like the 21st off ranked offensive line last season, you have that along with running backs, I'm bringing up the running back depth chart right now, without Josh Jacobs, the next highest back would have been Zamir White and Amir Abdullah. And also former Patriot Brandon Bolin. You, you're Bolden. You're not going to get a lot of wins with those running backs. Uh, so you have to rely on Jimmy G throwing it to Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers with a hint of Hunter Renfro. Which that may win you a couple games, but you'd rather have an all-pro back like Josh Jacobs to, you know, make sure you at least have some rushing attack. Sort of the uh, it, you you don't want a situation like the Bucks had last season where they couldn't run the football for the life of them. So everybody knew you got to pressure the quarterback because they aren't going to run the ball. And now now the Raiders bring back their dynamic running back to add another piece to a limited potentially limited offense with Jimmy G as a quarterback. So like you said, good pickup, really really good decision in signing him. Now the question is, what are they going to do moving forward? How much do you think? Because you think they, or do you think they're going to franchise tag Josh Jacobs next season, or do you think they? If he has a great season, sure. You you think that they wouldn't come to a long term deal to solidify? They, they don't need to. The running backs all cave. They they are happy to sign. Well, they're not happy, but they're willing to sign one year deals. Why would they go with a long term deal for a position where you're at a high risk of injury? That, that, that is a good point, and, and I was hoping that Josh. I mean, for, for, he was the longest one to to keep his foot in the ground and say. This is ridiculous. The running yeah, back market suppressed. He didn't wind up with anything better. The, I mean, it, it, a little bit better. So it's, it's about a million dollars more baseline salary. But I'm surprised he only had two hundred thousand in incentives. I know that's uh, ridiculous. I mean, that's basically like saying, okay, you just signed a one year, twelve million dollar deal. Yeah. It is like so. It, it's not a huge change when it comes to you know Josh Jacobs' contract. But I don't. I mean, the running back position is one of the most replaceable positions in the NFL. Uh, I mean, we, we've seen that time in and time again. I mean, we, we've. I mean, but for an elite Jews, running no. back, an elite running back makes a difference. And he did I think, for them. I think it depends on they the weren't team. that great a team last year, and the games that he was, it was a star in, they won. They went five and three. They they, yeah. sh- they should have gone, actually, all of their wins should have been. They could have wound up maybe more. with two or three wins without him. You know? I mean, well, it, here's the thing: they should have gone zero and nine when rushing for under a hundred yards. So Josh Jacobs actually would have con- would have been a like a monumental factor in each of their wins. Because guess what? He would have rushed for a hundred or more yards in each of their wins if the Patriots didn't throw that game away. Which I think they probably could have won that game if it went into overtime. But instead, like I said before, Jacoby Myers threw it away. Um, so it, they should have been zero and nine. Yeah, literally, he literally. He, he, they should have been zero and nine when rushing for under a hundred yards, but they had that one win. So technically, you know, not all of their wins came when rushing for a hundred or more yards. But you know, Josh Jacobs is, <coughs> is is a top three back in the league right now. Um, he played. He had a phenomenal season last season. He was the best running back last season, and he proved it himself. He had. He had basically. It was at forty nine point nine percent. Yeah, forty nine point nine percent of the Raiders' touches last season. He was. Ba- he was fifty percent of their entire offense. Yeah. So they had to have him back. His impact last season is on. They got a good deal. I think they got a good deal. And Absolutely. The running backs didn't hang in there, and so they suffer from it. They all get one year deals. So now we're going to be, you know, we're going to see this next season. You know, the running back, I guarantee you. And here's the thing with running backs. They, they don't sign four or five year deals. That just is not common. And if anything, it's, it's very, very rare. Uh, in reality, running backs will probably sign two, three year deals at the very most. You're not going to see a four or five year contract, especially for a guy trying to get his second contract. So that's four years as a rookie. Fifth, if you're uh, Josh Jacobs didn't get his fifth year option, they declined it. But if you're a good enough running back who got picked in the first round, you have the option of five years. 
you're not going to get signed for another five years. Like, that just isn't a thing because your prime for most running backs has already passed. Yeah. It was the first five years of your career. Right. So now we have to take a look and, you know, Josh Jacobs <clears throat> may have to sign. We may see something like a not on the same level particular necessarily, but a Zeke or a Dalvin Cook won two-year deals under $10 million each year. Because that six, six, seven million. It very well could Zeke be that. Got a six million dollar deal. Dalvin Cook got eight million. And and Dalvin Cook was a consistent thousand yard yeah, running right, back. Right. So the the it's gonna fall off a lot. Yeah. It's gonna fall off a lot. He's probably got one more big uh, you know, over ten million dollar contract. Uh, next year and then after that it will probably fall off but that's the thing though it is production is fantastic it's not necessarily going to be a contract because it's going to be the franchise tag yeah so it's a, while it is a well, one next year, year deal, will be you know, yeah, you know if they uh, what i mean is that the uh, it would be a it would be an option because the, the raiders could let him go or they could franchise tag him. it's not like saying we necessarily want you here long term we're just we're just saying you know what we don't think we don't want to pay you multiple years uh, you know tens of millions of dollars yeah. 15 or so million dollars a year so we're just going to say we're going to give you this option of a one-year deal, baseline value, no incentives, no nothing. I think it's I I don't know what the, I think the franchise tag goes up to maybe twelve million. For, they, I don't I'm not, I don't know the exact number, but this year it was ten point oh nine, if I'm not mistaken. So you know you got what about nine hundred thousand dollars more, give or take, um, or about a million dollars more. So he made a little bit more baseline value, but the running back market you know, we're, we're going to. We're probably going to talk about this next off season as well. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. I don't think it is either. You know, you know. Uh, but interestingly enough, most teams that go deep into the playoffs have a very good running back. Right? I I, like, I really think it depends on the team because you're talking about superstar quarterbacks. They don't need a great running back because they're good enough to carry an offense. You know, I. Uh, you don't think Kansas City had good running backs last Isaiah year? Isaiah Pacheco is not a top five running back. Not even top ten running back in the league. He's a seventh round pick. He looked good in the playoffs. He did look good in the playoffs, and some of the biggest runs were from Pacheco. Yeah. But we're talking about a guy, you know, and Pacheco's a seventh round pick. He's not making any money. Nor should I think he should be expecting a lot of money because he's a seventh round pick. These first round picks, they think they should be making yeah. 14, well, 15, 16 Bills, million dollars a year. The Bills didn't have a great running back. The Bills either. did not have a great running back. They didn't go back. very far either. They, they consistently make the playoffs. The though. Bengals. The ba- Joe Mixon's a good running back, he, right. he's a top 10 running back. The Seahawks don't have a good running back. They made the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, the Rams won a Super Bowl with Sony Michelle and Cam Akers. Like that, just no. Uh, these they're they're both not great running backs. Uh-huh. Tampa Bay won a Super Bowl with with you know Fournette showing up when it mattered. He was he was good that. But year. he was not a fun, he wasn't this great running back throughout the year. Uh, who else? Uh, the Giants. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is very good. Um, we talk about the the Vikings. They had Dalvin Cook so at the Dalvin time. Dalvin Cook. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones are not great quarterbacks. They needed that help. They needed the help from those great running backs. 49ers, CMC. 49ers with Christian McCaffrey and even yeah. Elijah Mitchell, who's a good running back. And uh, the Eagles. Eagles e- Eagles do not have a – Miles Sanders had a great year last year. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But he's not a, a dominant, you know, top five running back in the league. He definitely helped 100%. Yeah. But it was, it was Jalen Hurts and his legs that helped a lot. So, you know, I really, I, I'm starting to believe that these superstar quarterbacks, top five, top seven, top eight quarterbacks in the league, Lamar Jackson, he doesn't need to get superstar running backs because his running backs do enough and he's a mobile quarterback himself. They don't need to pay a running back $15 million a year to do something that Lamar takes touches away. And that's the thing with Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson may take, what, 50 touches or so away from, or, or more away from Jonathan Taylor? So if he's asking for $16 million, he's not going to get the same production as he would on a team like the Raiders if Josh Jacobs wasn't there. Or even like the Patriots, if he was the running back one of the Patriots, because that's sort of more their forte. The Falcons are trying to run the ball more. So you know, you, you'd get more touches there. So it, it really it's it's situational, I think, because yeah. you know it, it really depends on the offensive scheme, and I think that's why it's interesting to see. Uh, how the Raiders do this season under a new quarterback in Jimmy no, Garoppolo. they're going to do better with Josh Jacobs than they would without him. That's for sure. You, you would at least expect that, I would say. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.